Well, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has finally come. The moment that I review my most anticipated movie of the summer. That hit the spot. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I am here to review Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is written and directed by Quentin Tarantino and the film stars Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, and many many more. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood tells the story of Rick Dalton who is this former television actor particularly known for westerns and Cliff Booth who is Rick Dalton's stunt double as well as his best friend. These two are just trying to find fame as they head towards the end of an era, the golden age of Hollywood as times are beginning to change and all they're trying to do is just really adjust to it and just hope they can really go somewhere in their lives. So I was so incredibly excited for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I respect and admire Quentin Tarantino so much as both a writer and a filmmaker. The fact that a filmmaker like him was going to tackle the golden age of Hollywood had me really excited. On top of that, you have a stellar, stellar cast here. You know, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, and then some of the others like Al Pacino and Kurt Russell and Bruce Dern, Dakota Fanning. And all I could say about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is, it's truly unlike anything Quentin Tarantino has done. And that's something that I have to already give a positive to is that it is cool to see Quentin Tarantino do something different and for the most part make a very toned down movie compared to what he has made in the past. Just to start off with Quentin Tarantino since I'm already bringing him up. The filmmaking here is really stellar. It's super, super impressive, beautiful cinematography, how he captures the look of the golden age of Hollywood, just the settings all around in this movie. It's truly unbelievable. I really did feel like I was in that time period and you can tell just by how the time period was captured that Quentin Tarantino really does love the golden age of Hollywood and not just in terms of like the look of Hollywood in 1969 but just in terms of the movies that he likes to pay tribute to. It was very cool. I never felt like I was in, you know, the modern times. I always felt like I was in the 1960s, the late 1960s in this case, and it was very wonderful to see. And I did want to comment one more thing regarding Quentin Tarantino's filmmaking. I really like when he would have the camera on the television screen, like it would just be on the television screen, and we could see, like, for example, Rick Dalton in a television show, and it's just a scene that for like, maybe a good like solid minute and I really like it when he did that like I like how he'll just stay there and I thought it made the filmmaking definitely a little more interesting there. Leonardo DiCaprio he is terrific as Rick Dalton it's unlike any role he has ever done considering this character is very insecure I think Leonardo DiCaprio captures that very perfectly and just the way he plays his character so seriously definitely adds to the comedic effect of Rick Dalton, especially seen when he's just inside his trailer and he's just getting frustrated at himself because he's messing up lines and it's definitely one of the funniest parts in the movie without question. Rick Dalton is probably my favorite thing about this movie, if I have to be honest. Leonardo DiCaprio, in my opinion, 
steals the show. Some could say Brad Pitt steals the show, and I could definitely understand that. But for me, uh, Rick Dalton, for me, uh, does steal the show with this movie. And speaking of Brad Pitt, he is also on par with Leonardo DiCaprio as far as acting skills go. He is also terrific here. His character is so awesome. I really did enjoy following the character. I enjoyed following both of these gentlemen, to be honest. Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, as Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, they have really great chemistry with each other. Anytime these two are just talking to each other, I was just really enjoying it. Definitely the best performances, like even though I say Rick Dalton, you know, he's a show stealer for me. In reality, I would say Leo and Brad Pitt, they tie for the best performances of this film, in my humble opinion, of course. And then we have Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate. She is also wonderful in this film. And I do think that she is the perfect Sharon Tate. I could see why Quentin Tarantino was eyeing her to be Sharon Tate because she really does embody this role very well and how Margot plays Sharon Tate. She's just very sweet. And I, I also have to comment how, as far as how Quentin Tarantino writes Sharon Tate in this film, I think he's definitely very respectful when it comes to that and that's something I have to appreciate. It's more of him honoring Sharon Tate, which on that front, I could definitely appreciate. I think he does a very nice job of really showcasing just how truly sweet she was uh, was and is as a person. And yeah, Margot Robbie is just really great. And everyone else, they're not really in the film like that much, but they all do a really good job. Kurt Russell, not here that much, but really liked him. Dakota Fanning, not here that much. I really liked her though. Bruce Stern, not in here that much, but I really liked him. Luke Perry, rest in peace by the way to him. He's really good in here too. And everyone else that whose names I didn't most likely mention, they're really good here too. Mar Margaret Qualley, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Really good in this film too. Uh, I thought her performance was actually very impressive. And Al Pacino is someone else I was really looking forward to seeing and that also didn't disappoint. I really enjoyed him whenever he was on screen, which as expected, it wasn't gonna be for that long. I expected that, but I still had a blast whenever he is on screen though. I thought his performance was really great and I found his character to be very interesting. And I also really enjoyed the soundtrack here. I thought the songs fit very perfectly with the time period that Quentin Tarantino was showcasing. Uh, whatever songs he picked, not only do I really like those songs, but I just thought they really fit for the time period here. So the soundtrack I definitely really dug here. And as far as the Charles Manson stuff goes it is a slight concern I had going into Once Upon a Time in Hollywood but I will say I can say I'm relieved because just like with what Quentin Tarantino did with Inglorious Bastards yes he does rewrite it and I was aware he was gonna rewrite something but it was a matter of how he was gonna approach things because you know if you approach things in a certain way it could rub you the wrong way but I will say as far as how he ha he handled Charles Manson and the stuff with you know other people that connects to Charles Manson that's all I'll say it was definitely handled I think better than what my mind was thinking so I'll definitely say I was very relieved it nothing was done in my opinion at least like very disrespectfully and I have to say the Bruce Lee scene that did not disappoint whatsoever because that is honestly the funniest scene of the movie like yeah I would say it is honestly the funniest scene of the movie I was laughing so hard I honestly wish that scene didn't end I kind of wanted to go on a little bit longer that's how much I was just really enjoying that scene it's so funny it's so well done and I have to comment on that actor playing Bruce Lee he captures the mannerisms of that guy so well even though he's obviously not in this film that much it's just that one scene and another like brief scene later later on the movie but man for that short amount of screen time wow he's so good i actually did really like any time we see rick dalton talking to this little girl on set i actually thought the actress that played this little girl was really really great one of the strongest child performances of this year and even though it's such a minor part of the movie i did really like when those two were interacting because it made for some pretty funny stuff and as far as the third act goes i thought it was entertaining 
Unfortunately, that's where the positives stop for me with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because as much as I do appreciate what Quentin Tarantino tried to do with this film, I did leave feeling disappointed. And I really want to let my thoughts on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood settle. I didn't want to rush on my thoughts. I am the kind of person that likes to think a little bit what I think about a movie after I see it. And sometimes I know immediately, but I don't want to, I don't like rushing things out. I'm just that kind of person. I don't like to rush like, oh, this is what I'm going to rate this movie. Oh, this is what I think of this movie. I like to let things settle. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is definitely the film where I really want to let my thoughts settle for the longest time. I want it to settle and see if maybe the story would get better or worse for me. And the story is just not sticking out with me. Um, like I said, there's genuinely some really interesting stuff in this film, but my biggest problem is the runtime. This is two hours and 41 minutes long, and in my opinion, it did not need to be that runtime. I am being serious when I say that the runtime for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood actually tested my patience at points. And a few of those moments, I actually zoned out. <laughs> I really do think if this movie was two hours, maybe a little less than two hours, it could have been really, really good or even really great. Um, but like I said, it's way too long. I feel like there's certain things Quentin Tarantino honestly could have cut out. Now something like Brad Pitt, there's a scene where he's driving, but you see the obvious cuts in between. That didn't bother me because that was Quentin Tarantino actually trimming down something that's not needed. But like when Sharon Tate is in the car with her husband Roman Polanski and you know, they're in the car driving and there's no cut going on really it was testing my patience speaking of patting things out yes I mentioned how Margot Robbie is wonderful as Sharon Tate and yes I did mention that I appreciated that Quentin Tarantino showed a lot of respect to her by really showcasing how much of a sweet person she was and is but thinking about if it's important to the story or not I really don't think this movie would be that much different if the Sharon Tate stuff was cutting out and I was honestly disappointed with how Sharon Tate was used. I felt like there could have been so much more to her but all Sharon Tate does is she dances around, she smiles, she stares at the screen like when she goes to this movie theater to watch herself. Um, that's really all she does. I really feel like he could have given her so much more interesting stuff, but no, we're just left with that. And as I've stated earlier with Charles Manson and his family, I think Quentin Tarantino does a good job of not taking things in the wrong direction. But I will say as far as the B storyline goes when it comes to Charles and his family, it just didn't really grab me. It just really felt like one of those things that felt very padded out. And I get where he's going with the story considering where it eventually leads into the movie, but I just didn't find myself very invested in it. And even the cast too, I just told you, we have Dakota Johnson, Kurt Russell, Bruce Dern. A majority of these people in the cast list, they're not in this film that much. They're basically cameos. If you're excited to see this film because Dakota Fanning is in it, I mean, cool. She's in this film for a couple of minutes. Are you excited to see this one for Kurt Russell? Cool. He's in this for a few minutes at best. Bruce Stern, also in here for a couple minutes. Cool to see him though. It's ironic to me that Al Pacino is billed as last in the cast credit when even though he's not in this movie that much, he actually has more screen time than a, than a majority of these people in the cast list. Al Pacino, at least I can say, he's not a cameo. He's in this movie a little bit more than just a cameo role, but almost everyone else in the cast list is basically a cameo. 
And that's really disappointing. Not to mention that even the editing in this movie could have been even better. Not just as far as like trimming down the runtime of the movie, but also as far as like some editing choices that Quentin Tarantino decides to make. Some of them are very cool, um, and I thought it added that interesting style to the film, but then there's other times where it has these weird cuts to other things, and it also personally didn't work for me. And something that I cannot believe, I actually cannot believe I am saying this about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The screenplay is not that memorable. Obviously there's moments where it is when Rick Dalton is on set. There's some very memorable lines on there and Cliff Booth he has some really great lines too, but outside of that, when most of the other actors are speaking Quentin Tarantino's lines, I don't find it very memorable. And on top of me not finding the screenplay that memorable, the storyline just isn't as interesting as I think it could have been. I mentioned in my positives how the third act is entertaining. No doubt, yes, it's entertaining. It stopped me from zoning out, I'll give it that, but the third act to me did not belong with the rest of the film. If I'm going to be honest, and I really thought about this third act, because I know there's people that's going to go absolutely nuts for the third act, and I can understand that to be honest, but when I think about how the tone of the third act fits with the rest of this movie, it fell out of place because this is Quentin Tarantino's least violent movie. The closest he gets to a violent moment before we even hit that third act is a moment where Brad Pitt punches someone. And even that moment is nowhere near as violent as Quentin Tarantino's past movies. I do think Quentin Tarantino, this could have been the first movie where violence isn't really focused on at all. I really felt like we got that third act where things get crazy, where things get violent in that Quentin Tarantino fashion because Quentin Tarantino, he just couldn't help it. Like if this movie had obviously violent moments leading up to that third act, it would make sense and the third act could have been a lot more enjoyable for me because it would actually fit with the tone. And I wanted to be patient because this is a long movie, you have to be patient and I really did try to be patient but unfortunately even where things ended aside the very very ending which is nice I'll say that the very very ending of the movie is nice. Nothing else really built up to anything to me. And I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for Quentin Tarantino making a more laid back movie. I'm glad the guy can feel more relaxed and make a movie he wants to make. I am all for that, but there has, your movie has to build to somewhere. Yeah, I, I've just come to the conclusion that this movie disappointed me. This is one of the most disappointing movies of the year. Um, once Upon a Time in Hollywood, yeah, uh, I, I, I really thought about this. I really wanted to like this movie. I didn't have to come out thinking it was a masterpiece. I didn't have to come out thinking it's a great, you know, experience or anything, but even if it was just a solid movie, I would have been happy, but there's way too many problems for me to even go up the solid level with this movie. And another thing is rewatchability. Rewatchability is very important for a film and when I think about if I ever want to rewatch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if I ever want to go out of my way to buy Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on Blu-ray, my answer to that is no. I have no desire to ever watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood ever, ever again. The rating I'm going to give it though, I am going to be a little generous with because the stuff I really like about the movie, I do genuinely really like, but it's way too long. I feel like Quentin Tarantino really pads out the movie when it feels so unnecessary. That third act, while entertaining, did not fit with the rest of the movie for me. And I, I just wish I enjoyed this movie more. I'm going to give Once Upon a Time in Hollywood 
two and a half out of four stars. It should have been a two in reality because I did say how much I was struggling to pull through this movie, but it's for the stuff that I did say I really, really enjoy about this movie. That's why I'm being generous with that rating. So yeah, I'll settle with a two and a half out of four with this movie, but yeah. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and what is your favorite movie from Quentin Tarantino. Even stuff that he's only written. If you want to include that too, you can do that as well. And um, yeah, thank you as always for watching everyone. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power. We are the